So a lot of changes, especially defensively, has happened to this Browns roster, which may change how you might want to rank the individual players on this roster. So before we get into offseason, camp season, season, if that's a thing that we want to call it, I want to talk about the Browns roster. I want to rank them and see where everybody is. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to jump into the tier list and rank the Browns roster. Everybody that's significant on it, there's going to be some people that are going to be left off because there's probably like 90 dudes on the roster right now. And obviously not 90 guys are going to make the team. But that's what we're going to do today. But before I do that, I want to make sure I give a shout out to the Patreon.com dog check tier members. And as always, to start with. Fred Pratt III, David Valtier, Relentless Buck, Chunt, Rex Kaufman, The Real Quincy Carrier, Kevin Johnson, Marino V, Cleveland Cart, Matt H, Sign Sheets, Gemini, Fight Dirty 74, Yo-Yo, Matt Lloyd, Paul Wilcox, Hundo Magnifico, Rob Ferron, Kyle Stouffer, Lukey from Munich, Dave Roth, J Guy 101, Joe Bobby, Brad Cabo, Dylan W, James McGinley, Orenda Hall, Chad Gimme, David Malinato, Dylan Hale, Josh Bendor, Mark M, TJ Showman, Stuart Moore, Cleveland BCI, Robert Germain Jr., Dave Mike May, John Cummings, Andrew Hirsch, Curtis Bear, Brian Rock Kumar, John Albert, Masayua, Budza Roland, James Nemo, Mac House, Reef Hertz, Philip Wilcoxon, Marie Vivert, Sean Barron, Goggles Pisano, Corporal Nick Lopez, Dom Gazzulo, Nick Nasty, Ian Whitaker, Colin 216, Anthony Latham, Christian, Dave Strong, Matt Stone, Charles Work, Billy Moose Gentry, Mark Burnett II, Andre Griffin, Otis Wolf, Dog Pound Kai, Greg Ehlers, Austin Bowling, Kirkabar, Lydia Mahawk, Jesus Serrano, Chris Fonts, Picktown Browns Backers, Mark Khan, Max Isle Dojo, and Water Bear Marketing. Again, guys, thank you so much for the support. It means a ton. Now, Let's jump to the tier list. All right, we're here in the tier list maker. So I'm going to break down some of these tiers for you guys before we get started. At the top here is all pro. That is the highest honor. That means you're probably one of the best three position players um in your position so that's obviously you know that's more than top five that's more than pro bowl and then speaking of being more than pro bowl the next tier is pro bowl which means you're one of the better players in your uh position group especially in your conference this usually means that you know you'll rank in the top 10 overall maybe if it's like a position group like quarterback where there's one on every team or you would be somewhere you know within the top 10 of your conference in the very least in some of these more populated position groups like wide receiver defensive back everything else so that's pro bowl starter means you're a quality nfl starter um not much more than that you know this is a guy that i think on most rosters could be a starter so i'm gonna put him at starter role players are guys who you know maybe they're not fully developed yet but they're at a point to where they can play a strong role um you know do one or two things really well whether it be special teams whether it be situational um defense or situational offense that's where those guys will go developmental or guys who are just kind of being developed they're not really at risk of being cut because they're just not at that point yet to where you know enough about them to feel comfortable cutting them. But they're also guys that really aren't going to contribute um, in a great way in the upcoming season. And then you have guys who are on the bubble. And this is pretty obvious. Guys who are at risk of not even making the team here. Now, I only have like 47 players, I think, here. Just because if I ranked all 90 guys right now, there would be a lot of dudes on the bubble. Because obviously, a majority of the 90 players are going to get cut. Uh, well, not a majority, but a good chunk of them. And also, um, it just wouldn't be entertaining. And the video would be like extra, extra long. So, I have to also kind of manage those things. Now, all that being said, let's begin. And we're going to start with Andrew Billings, who I'm going to put as a starter. I think this is a guy who can start on most defenses, maybe on a really, really deep interior defensive line. He ends up being a role player, 
but I think on most defenses, he's a starter. Same thing with uh, Andy Janovich. He's a guy, he's kind of a proven starter there at the fullback position. And then we got our first guy. Um, I struggle between putting him as a role player and developmental. And this is Anthony Schwartz that I'm talking about, the wide receiver draft pick out of Auburn. Because I do think there's a role that he's going to be able to play that he's going to fit on this team. But I also think he's a developmental project at the pure wide receiver position. But I'm going to go as far as what I expect in 2021. And I'm going to put him here at role player. I think he's going to get some snaps off some end arounds. I think he's going to have a role as being a deep threat guy, um, but not necessarily be a mainstay wide receiver. Not somebody you're really going to see out there for more than maybe 5, 10 offensive snaps in a game unless somebody is injured. I really wouldn't expect him to be out there for more than 5 or 10 snaps, um, but somebody whose snaps could be play a significant role because they could get a trick play ran in their direction or be a decoy to help a trick play become successful then we have anthony walker i think he's a pretty obvious starter level guy um he didn't start in indy just because they have a ridiculously deep linebacker room he got bobby okariki and he got darius leonard over there in indy so he didn't start but that's a special situation i think most linebacking rooms he can find a way to start he's not the greatest coverage linebacker but he's a really good run defender and he's a really smart linebacker think of him as a upgraded version of bj goodson right bj was good enough to be out there i think anthony walker's just slightly better than him especially when it comes to the run defense part of being a linebacker and again you know he has all these accolades people really seem to talk highly of him um that played with him in indy as far as his ability to lead and help guys out and you know be one of those examples so good on him um Austin Hooper is somebody who he should be in Pro Bowl, right? He should be a Pro Bowl type player. And I think he really came on at the end of last year. Um, I wonder if he's going to have the numbers this year to be a Pro Bowler just because the Browns have so many weapons on the outside now. Um, you know, you still got to work Donovan Peoples Jones in, Richard Higgins, Jarvis Landry, um, even, you know, the five snaps you might want to give Anthony Schwartz during the game. That's really not going to leave a ton for the tight end to do as far as receiving. Um, it's going to be more about blocking. I do think that he could make a case for Pro Bowl. I think he's a fringe guy, and I also think in the AFC, he he can be a Pro Bowl. So I'm gonna put him in Pro Bowl, um, but he's probably like the last guy on the tier. He's very fringe on starter in Pro Bowl. And you got Baker Mayfield, who's gonna be. I think he's a pretty clear Pro Bowl guy. Um, you know, this is a guy who has had two. If you look at PFF uh, grades and you care about that, two top ten um, finishes. When it comes to PFF in his career, this is somebody who had a top 10 QBR last year. Um, by all metrics last year, was a top 10 quarterback, all efficiency metrics especially. Um, this is somebody who was critical on third and longs, critical in clutch situations last year. Um, nationally and sometimes locally, I think we focus on what Baker isn't because there's so many quarterbacks out here who do things that Baker cannot do, right? Like um, Patrick Mahomes can throw a ball just a little bit further than Baker Mayfield. Josh Allen has all of the size and strength and things that Baker Mayfield lacked coming out of college. Lamar Jackson, obviously a fantastic athlete and pretty good passer of the football as well, but not better than Baker. My point is, is that the quarterback position now is filled with so many guys who are not just great athletes because I do think Baker is a very good athlete at the quarterback position. I mean, he runs the same 40 time as Patrick Mahomes. He has a great arm. It's just right now there's a revolution or a change going at the quarterback position to where you're seeing guys out here who are plus plus 
plus athletes and it's more than one, right? It used to be maybe there'd be one Cam Newton at a time. There's like four or five of these guys out here right now. Trevor Lawrence just entered the league. You know, Justin Fields, he could be somebody who could be one of those plus plus guys. And I think sometimes people look at Baker Mayfield and don't see the height. They don't see the size. They don't see the strength. The arm strength is something that you really have to uh, focus in on him to figure out that he has, right? It's not immediate obvious when you watch Baker Mayfield and I think that makes a lot of people focus on what he doesn't have but if you just look at what he does have it's a top 10 quarterback skill set while I don't think that's all pro level quarterback thing because I don't think he's probably one of the six best quarterbacks in NFL I don't think he's proven anything to be at that point yet but I think he's proven that he's a top 10 quarterback in the NFL um, and I, I'd be hard pressed to to find any real good substantive reasons to to make an argument otherwise right whenever you hear people make the the anti-argument for Baker Mayfield not being a top 10 quarterback it, it's really um, anecdotal reasons right oh he hasn't had two good back-to-back years despite him having three coaches in three years or oh well, I just don't know about him or oh you know I don't like how he has to do all this play action so, you know it's never really like concrete good reasons it's always like anecdotal stuff and I think you know there's a plethora of ex- there's a lot of reasons to explain that that I already talked about um, yeah that's why I put Baker Mayfield in Pro Bowl you got Blake Hans here I think he's a developmental guy probably going to be close to being on the bubble um, played really good at some guard and tackle snaps in the playoffs so he might be somebody that you want to keep on the roster to be a backup tackle um, same thing here but I think Chris Hubbard now because you brought in James Hudson who's another developmental tackle um, he might be on the bubble here because he makes about six seven million dollars and now you have a guy in James Hudson you hope can be your swing tackle this year um, Blake Hans is somebody that you feel good about as your swing guard and emergency tackle and that really leaves um, Chris Hubbard in his position to where he might not have a role on this team that's going to befit his value um, right now yeah Cody Parkey here he's a regular old good starting level kicker I'm happy with it Will he make 50, 40 yard? Will he make 50 yard field goals? No. Will he make a ton of 40 yard field goals? Probably not. Um, but with the offense that the Browns have, should you be asking him to kick a ton of 40 or 30 or, four, or 20 or whatever yard field goes? No, you shouldn't, right? Um, this offense should be able to score. This offense should be able to score in the red zone. Anytime Cody Parkey is out there, no disrespect to him, it would be a disappointment because this is an offense that was a really good red zone offense last year and that you don't want to have to have all these field goals goes in here where Cody Parkey and what he brings to the team matters a lot right like as long as he can make the extra points that's what the Browns need if we have to focus on Cody Parkey's ability to make 40 20 or 30 whatever yard field goes that means the offense is not in a good situation and there are bigger problems on this team to look at and we got a guy here a lot of talk about on social media Curtis Weaver um, unfortunately I know a lot of guys believe in his potential former fifth or fourth round pick um, but he, he's on the bubble here, man. He's a edge rusher, I believe. And, you know, they got Tack, they got Clowney, they got Miles. So, obviously, the top is going to be crowded and, and cluttered. But they also have other guys they're bringing in, like Malik McDowell might be able to surpass him as a edge guy on the roster. Porter Gustin is still there. There's only but, like, six edge rush spots available um, on the team and right now, there are guys who make a better argument when it comes to spark scores, when it comes to athletic scores, and when it comes to what they have already done on this team, uh, when you talk about Port Augustine, that just make him making the team kind of unlikely um and i don't think that's through any fault of his own i just think this team is, has a lot of guys here who have great potential um at that edge rushing position plus the established names at the top right miles jadavion um and everybody else then we're going to talk about david and joku who i really think um improved this case throughout all of 2020 right he was a guy who he didn't have a great statistical year and he had you know his normal up and downs with david and joku but when you needed him at the very least right 
he at least was there. So at least those odds played out in your favor. And again, this is a guy who can do a lot of different things. He's very athletic. He He's a good tight end. Um, he was a much better blocker for a portion of the season last year than he ever has been in his entire career. And I think that's why he's going to be a starting level player. I think you can put David Njoku on a lot of teams and he'll be a pretty good starting tight end. Um, the problem with David Njoku when it comes to his trade value is that not a lot of teams are looking for uh, starting tight ends or willing to give up a ton to get a starting tight end here. Um, then Denzel Ward, I think he's going to have an all-pro type season. I think this is a dude who is primed um, to have one of the best years of his career. You talk about the burden being off of him because of the addition of all the guys in the secondary. I really think he's primed to have a huge year. I did a whole video about why Denzel Ward yesterday um, is going to be one of the breakout players on this roster. Darius Johnson is a guy I like. I think he's a really good kick returner and a good third running back, but he's on the bubble. They drafted Demetric Felton. Demetric can play a little wide receiver in addition to return kicks and be the third running back. So by the very nature of that, you know, the Ernest is on the bubble because they're not going to keep more than three running backs on the active roster. And I don't think he has any more practice squad eligibility left. So it's either make the roster or get cut at this point for um, Dearness, and I don't think he's going to be able to make the roster or he's going to have a hard time at least making the roster. It's an uphill battle for him. You got Donovan Peoples-Jones. He was a developmental guy last year. I think he's going to take the step up here to a role player. He's not going to see a ton of snaps, similar to Anthony Schwartz, right? He's probably going to see like five snaps a game if he's lucky. Um, but he's somebody who can step in there and play the X a little bit as well as Anthony Schwartz and allow you to move Odell around. Um Unfortunately for both of these guys, Anthony Schwartz um, and more Donovan Peoples-Jones especially, right? whatever they're going to be used for is usually going to be to get Odell open. So they're not going to be the target on any designs. But I do think the Browns have a use for um, Donovan Peoples-Jones' strength and his length. Right, He's a longer and bigger wide receiver than anybody on the Browns roster. Right now, the Browns roster is full of six-foot, you know, sub-200-pound guys. You know, you got Donovan Peoples-Jones out there at plus 200, you know, 6'3". He, he, you can use that size to your advantage and put him in there in some heavier packages with the tight ends, especially in the red zone. I expect you to see a lot of Donovan Peoples-Jones in the red zone, a lot of David Njoku and Anthony Hooper. I'm not Anthony Hooper. Um, uh, but Hooper in the end zone and also Richard Higgins in the end zone because I do think that those guys are going to be really effective there. I like Jarvis. Jarvis has never been a great red zone producer. He's never been a touchdown guy. Odell can be that, but we have to see where he's at as far as his, his explosiveness, athleticism, and his ability to kind of jump after the ACL injury because a lot of what makes Odell a great red zone guy is that athletic ability because, again, he's not a great size guy. You got a guy like Grant Delpit, who I think is going to be a starter this year. He could be a role player, right, if he's not ready to go after that Achilles injury, but he looks like he's making fast progress off of that he's probably going to be ready to practice and technically i think he's going to be active week one i don't think you should expect him to play significant snaps until about week six or eight because it's just going to take a while for him to get comfortable um and, and confident like you would want him to be coming off that achilles injury again take it slow with him he's going to be a good player down the line but this year, if, if it, you have to wait till week six or eight, you got to wait till week six or eight. And then you got a guy who is on the bubble here. Now, he could be a starter. He could be pro bowl. He could be a role player. But he can't be developmental anymore. I think Greedy Williams is a bubble guy. He is battling right now with Greg Newsom, who looks like to be the favorite to take that starting corner spot on the opposite side of Denzel Ward. And the tough thing with Greedy Williams is he's really a boundary corner. He's not somebody you can have play inside zone it's not to his strength um he's not the most physical corner in the world even though he's a better tackler than people give him credit for there's just not a lot of ways to put him on the field other than being the other boundary corner and if greg newsom beats him out in that position you know you could come down to a situation where like yeah greedy is a better player than an mj stewart um or something like that 
But the the fact of the matter is that you can play MJ at two or three different positions and be fine. You can only play Greedy at the one position. And yes, he is much better than MJ Stewart at the one position. But when it comes to after being the starter, it's more about your versatility and what else you bring. And I don't think anybody in here is going to make the argument that Greedy's going to be some lockdown special teamer, that Greedy's going to be this lockdown nickel corner, or he's going to be this physical box corner that you can use here. So that's why he's on the bubble. Does he have the talent to be a starter? He has the talent to be a pro bowler this year. He could do it. Um, it's just about if he can win that battle out with a guy who also is very talented um, and has that Pro Bowl potential in Greg Newsom. And if he doesn't, then I don't see what else he does on this team. So that's why he's on the bubble. You got Greg Newsom, who I'm going to put at starter. I think that's pretty obvious here. So I'm going to speed up so you guys aren't here for an hour. Um, so I'm going to get through some of these guys rather quickly. You got Harrison Bryant here. He's a role player this year. Jack Conklin, pro, pro Bowl, fringe all pro. He, I think he was technically all pro last year, but he's pro bowl, fringe all pro. So no disrespect to him at all. Jacob Phillips, I think he's a developmental guy still. I think he gets one more year um, without having to worry. I think Jamie Gillian is, is a pro bowl punter. Um, obviously, Jarvis is a pro bowler. JC Treader is a starter. Jedrick Wills is a pro bowler. Joe Batonio is always a pro bowler. Kareem Hunt, obviously a pro bowler. Cordero Hodges on the bubble. There's a lot of guys at the wide receiver position now. Um, I think he he has to worry about where his spot is. Malcolm Smith is a starter. Uh, Malik Jackson is, you know, French pro bowler, but kind of top level starter guy. So I'm going to put him here. Uh, MJ Stewart is a guy I talked about. He's kind of a role player here, and he's part of the reason why Greedy might have a issue making the team not that mj is a better corner but he's a more versatile corner and right now that is the stock that's trading at the highest for the browns defense port augustine is a good role player kind of situational guy guy you want to get in there when miles is tired obviously nick chubb is an all pro level guy um robert jackson I think he's a developmental guy. I think he's better than, than what he showed in those two Pittsburgh games. So I think he got a bad rap. I think he's a guy you could develop. He can be a, a good good corner here. Um, Sheldrick Redwine's on the bubble. He's been on the bubble for a while here. So we'll see how he does this year. Uh, Sione Takitaki is a good role-playing linebacker. I see a lot of hate for Sione Takitaki. I mean, look, he's not a great coverage linebacker by any means, but he is a much better run defender than most of the other linebackers on the Browns roster sans, what, uh, Anthony Walker and JOK, right? Like, other than those two, like, he is clearly above the rest of the linebackers in the room um, and Malcolm Smith. Malcolm Smith is much better than Sione Takitaki, but he is a much better linebacker than, you know, the other young guys right that were drafted with him what Mac Wilson has not developed into when you look at Jacob Phillips and what he is at this point you know Sione Takitaki at least he can provide and provide some value in the run game here the other guys have issues kind of consistently providing anywhere so that that's going to be a, a thing to watch out for Ronnie Harrison is a good starting level safety here um, Tack McKinley I think he's going to be more of a elite role player kind of role here he's going to be a situational guy that the Browns going to move around and use a lot. Wyatt Teller, obviously an all-pro level guy. Um, you got Troy Hill, who's kind of one of those top-level starting players. He's not ever really going to make a Pro Bowl because it's really hard to make a Pro Bowl when you're playing at the nickel position. But I think he is a really good starter guy. Um, Rashard Higgins is going to be used as like um, similar to Tack McKinley, right? He's not going to start because there are just too many ways to use all the tight ends and wide receivers that they have. He, it's going to be hard to see him start a lot. But I do think he's going to be used in some specific situations in the red zone, and he's going to have great value when it comes to how he's used. So I do think Richard's going to have a really good year this year, or at least he's primed to. Obviously. Obviously, Miles Garrett is all pro. There's really no argument to be made in the contrary to that. Odell Beckham, I feel like he's going to have a bounce back year and become a pro bowler again. I feel like over 1,100 yards might be possible for him. I think him and Baker are really going to get that chemistry down as they showed evidence of doing before the injury, obviously. Um, and then you got a guy like JOK who, look, he's a rookie. I can only really put him at starter. Um, but I really feel like he can be one of those rookies who do make the pro. 
Robo. I think he's primed for that position. And in that case, that really puts Mac Wilson down here at bubble. He was on the bubble last year. He had a couple of DNPs, did not play healthy scratches. Um, and that's going to be an issue for him going forward. Right. Right. And, and it's not like the linebacker room got worse than last year. It got better, much better last year. They brought back Malcolm Smith. Um, they still have Sione Taki Taki who can get you some effective snaps in certain situations. They drafted JLK and they signed Anthony Walker. Really means that Mac Wilson is fighting for a roster spot at this point. John Johnson the third. I'm going to put him as a Pro Bowl caliber player. And look, I'm not saying every player that I put up here is going to make the Pro Bowl, right? Because it's likely that a guy like Austin Hooper won't, um, Jamie Gillian won't, um, and probably like Joe Batonio or Jedrick Wills or one of the linemen won't because it's just random when it comes to Pro Bowl selection. So I don't think I'm saying, oh, the Browns going to have like 25 Pro Bowlers or whatever it is. I'm just saying these are guys who are going to play at a Pro Bowl level this year. I can already see that comment happening. I also think Jadavion is going to have a bounce back Pro Bowl level type year as well as Odell. And you got a guy like Jordan Elliott who's developmental right now, but he can very quickly be on the bubble because there's a lot of guys in that defensive tackle room now. They really did a good job of bringing guys in, and I think he might get lost in the shuffle here. I mean, they got Tommy Togiai. They got Marvin Wilson in the draft. You know, they let go of Sheldon Richardson, but I still think you can feel really good about Togiai. You can feel good about Billings coming back, and if he does not have a strong camp um, in his second year, I think Jordan Elliott can get lost in the shuffle. But that's my ranking so far. That's where I think the Browns are at in some of the Browns players. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. But again, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Have a good night.